Hi everyone, it's Jeanette here from the sewing studio with a finish and a little bit of an add-on video, I think from last time. Now, a little while ago we were doing this, or I was doing this little scrap cushion because I've set myself a target of trying to do 12 projects with my scraps this year. So I'm on track. Um, this would be the second of those. And I wanted to bring it back because I finished it. And also I thought I was a little bit blasé in my last video going, oh, and then you just make an envelope back and you've got a cushion. So I thought, I went away and I thought, actually, Jeanette, you probably need to show everybody how you do your envelope backs. Um, particularly because I say, I know in the comments, we have lots of um, comments that say you're, you're, you're new beginner sewers. So it's like, don't assume that people know how to do an envelope back. So that's what I'm here today. So you can see here, I finished all of this. I did a little bit of um, hand, hand quilting and this is sort of a big, big stitch hand quilt with embroidery floss around each of the flowers. And I've just sort of left it um, nice and simple. And if I flip it over, you can see my envelope back and I do them like this now. And this has evolved over the years I've been sewing. And I tend to make these now with this, this nice band. And if I turn it there on the inside, you'll see there's, there's no raw edges. Um, I like to have my seams nice and finished off. No raw edges anywhere. Also, because I think a little cushion in particular, it is likely to be one of those items that go in and out of the wash. So you want everything to be a bit durable. We've spent time and money doing this, so we want things to last and look as nice for as long as possible. So I thought I would show you this technique, particularly how I do this band. So let's just move that little cushion out the way. Now in the video where I, I was showing how to make that cushion, I was showing you how to put the nine patches together with Christmas fabric. So that's what I've been doing here on this one. So I've done a couple of things a little bit differently on this. Um, the nine patches were made exactly the same way. I quilted this one on my home embroidery machine. I bought some quilting designs which go on it, but I particularly chose one and these are just Christmas light bulbs that are on it. But I wanted one that was sort of quite open. I, I chose something that's quite open. Um, I think I've said before, the more thread, the more quilting you put into something, the stiffer it becomes. And I want this to be sort of sort of a nice soft plush cushion. So I left the, the quilting on it fairly open and I did the quilting first and then I've done the applique on top. So I put the stars on top. Um, I cut these stars out. I used to do a lot of paper crafting and I've got Sizzix dies which will, will cut fabric. And I had a die which had two or three different size stars on it. Um, and that's what I've used to cut these. Now the big ones, I've, I've used two different sizes. The big stars um, measure two and a half inches from point to point and the small stars measure one and a half inches from point to point. And I thought just that mix of smaller and larger stars um, worked really well. The other thing I've done with it as well is I've sort of sc scattered where they've gone. I wanted it to look more like twinkling stars. So as with the flowers, I put them in dead in the center of all the squares. These I've just sort of sprinkled them on throughout. So there's a the couple of little bits of uh, different things. And I do all of that work just onto the wadding. And then when I've finished, I'll get a, a piece of fabric and put that on top to make the lining. And you can see there, I've just gone round with about an eighth of an inch away from the edge with a stitch just to hold those layers together, ready for when I come to do assembly. So let's just set that one aside for the moment and bring these pieces in. Because while I was making that one, for the back of that one, I was using a 20 inch piece of fabric. So I managed to get the two pieces for the flaps and the bit for the band from that one cut. But on this one, I was using remnants of a red fabric and I thought actually this is an opportunity to use a few more of my scraps. So I've actually pieced together some small bits. These were bits that were left over from making the nine patch as some of these were. And I've added some other fabrics to, to this. Um, and these were all strips that were from two and a half inches down to one and a half inches in width. So they don't have to be the same width. And you can see from this one, that I actually put the larger strips on the outside because this is slightly oversized and I'm going to sort of trim that back when I come to do the finishing. And, and we'll go over that a little bit in a minute. So this band itself, the cushion is 12 and a half. I think this comes out about 13, maybe 13 and a half. But I know I'm going to lose some off the edges of those wider strips. Um, and my shortest piece I was using was five inches. It was a leftover bit from a, a charm square, five inch square. Uh, so I pieced it all together and then I've just trimmed it down to get some nice straight hedges. And I think it ended up being trimmed back to four and three quarters. 
the width of the band on the flower cushion was four inches. So any, anywhere between four and five inches works out to be a nice size for this size cushion. So that's the, the piece we're going to use for the band. And then for the, the top and bottom flaps of the cushion, I cut two eight inch pieces. Now the maths for any sort of envelope back on a cushion is you want about a four inch overlap. So I work on the basis of if I go with two thirds of the height of the cushion on both pieces, that should give me about a four inch overlap. So these pieces were both cut uh, 12 and a half. I think these are also slightly oversized, but you want at least 12 and a half. And these I've cut at eight um, because my band is gonna make up that extra bit of uh, space that we need. If you're just doing a normal envelope back, do two thirds and then add a bit more extra for uh, the hemming. So this piece, this is gonna be my top piece. So that's gonna get attached to the band. And this is my bottom piece. And all I've done on this bottom piece is I've done a double hem. And all you do on that is you turn over the edge of the fabric once and then again, and then you just top stitch that down. So you can sort of see that there. If I put that to the side, actually, if I trim away those little pokey bits, you can see I've got sort of a double layer of fabric there. And that's the bottom piece. So that's all done. So I'm gonna set that one aside and I'm gonna pull in this one because this is the one now we're gonna to attach this band. Now for anybody that's done the pillowcase challenge and seen how to do a cuff or done a cuff on a pillowcase, it's the same technique. So we're going to get our strip and you can sort of decide which you want. Um, side. I think I'm gonna have the green on the left, it doesn't really matter. So we put our strip down and then we're gonna take the top edge, and I'm gonna look for the right and wrong side. I think that's feeling smoother, so that's the right side. And I'm going to put the two fabrics together like that. Now, before I move on, I, I will say, if you're working with a directional fabric, let me just bring this cushion in. This part of this panel here, that's gonna be the bottom of the fabric. So if I just show you on this little cushion here, that bit of fabric there is gonna end up here. So if you've got a directional, that needs to be the bottom. So if this was a Father Christmas, his feet would need to be there. So that's where the bit with his feet would need to be on that. And that bit on the band ends up being this bit here. So just be mindful of how that turns out um, if you've got a directional. So we're gonna take this and we're just going to line those two raw edges up. Now you could do this as a two-step process. I tend to just do it as a one-step. That's a very bent pin. We had a sort out of our pins the other day and we thought we'd taken all the bent ones out. So we either didn't or we've bent more in the meantime. <laughs> Probably the latter. So I'm just gonna pin and I tend to sort of pin. So the pins are pointing up that way. That's another nice bent one as well. Let's, let's not put it back. <laughs> let's leave it out now we've found it. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put those. As I said, if you wanted to do this as a two-step, you could take that to the machine and just do a, a, a tacking stitch about an eighth of an inch in. But I'm just gonna do it as a one-step process. So we do it like that. And then we're gonna take this fabric and we're gonna roll it up. So this is also called the roll up or the burrito method I've seen it called. And we're just gonna roll it up to about halfway there. And I'm gonna grab a couple of clips and just hold that fabric there out the way. And this is where on this, on the band, on the cuff, you can't make it too narrow because all of that has to fit inside without getting in the way. And then we're gonna take this bottom edge and we're gonna bring it up and over. So we're making like a fabric sausage roll. And then I'm gonna repin. Now the other thing I will say on this, um, you can probably see here, I have uh, ironed on some interfacing onto the back of those strips. Purely optional, you don't need to but I felt it would just help secure all of those seams a little bit more. And once again, you know, make it more, more durable going in and out of a washing machine if it needs to get washed. I'm just gonna put another pin right at the edge there. But this is oversized, so like I say, I'm not gonna to worry too much if, it, if things don't line up by the time we get to the edges. Now I'm gonna take that to the machine, I'm gonna do a quarter of an inch seam all along that edge. Now, all we have to be mindful of here is this bit that we've rolled up inside. That needs to be well away from our seam. We don't want to be catching that in our seam. Oh, can't pick up the pin. 
hin. So I'm going to take those clips off and we're going to take that to the iron. I tend to give it a press first this way round and then we'll turn it through. I'm going to hit that from both sides. Now, while I'm at the iron, I'm just going to reach in here and grab that fabric that I rolled up and we're just going to pull it, pull it out gently. This is where I could have done with bringing a chopstick, help poke it through. And now while I'm here at the iron, I'm just going to give that a nice press and just make sure there's no tucks or creases. And of course here now we need to iron all of that out. And that's what that looks like. So now I'm going to take that back to the machine and I'm going to do a top stitch along that edge there and that will just hold to keep, sorry, help to hold that seam down and again at the edge here. Now, before I do that, I'm actually going to, because there's quite a lot of bulk there, I think I'm going to change the foot on my machine to put the dual feed on because that will help feel, feel, uh, feed through all those layers. So let me do that a minute. Um, so I'm just going to line it up with there and I can, I can move my needle a little bit if I need to. And the other thing I am going to do is, um, actually, let's just make sure I'm not going to hit yet, is um, I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to a 3.0. There's quite a lot of bulk there and this is also a top stitch. And now we can feed that through. So the other side. So that's what that looks like now. So that's all nice. I've trimmed off the, my ends there, but I don't need to worry about that too much because I'm actually going to get my overlocker out uh, and put this through the overlocker to finish it off. So that's the top. That's the, the, the back of it. And you can see there, Everything's all nice and neat, no raw edges. So just one final thing to cover on putting this together. Sort of decide which way round you want your quilt to go. I'm calling it a quilt. I guess it is a quilt. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go that way. Now the rule of thumb is whichever way, whichever piece you put down first is the bit that's going to appear on top of the outside. So you've just got to bear that in mind. Now I'm just going to line this up on my cutting mat so I get this on straight and then this is going to be the top panel so I've got this the outside piece or the front of the cushion right side up and then I'm going to lay this right side down on top of it just making sure that it's gone on straight and I'm using the lines on my cutting mat to make sure that I've done that and then this is our the bottom piece that I've made just with that double fold hem. Um, so these are going right sides together again. And the same with this one, it's going right side down towards the cushion. And I'm once again, looking at my lines on my mat, just making sure that's gone in level. You, do, you don't want to put them on all, all skewy at this point. So I'm just gonna check that I'm happy with that overlap. We should have about a four inch overlap. And that's looking pretty good to me, but I'm just gonna just measure. Yeah, that is four inches because we have got a little bit of extra if we need to, but that is my four inches. So that's working really well. So pins, pins out again, I'm gonna pin it, but I'm actually gonna stitch it from the other side or send it through the overlocker from the other side. So I'm gonna pin, but I'm gonna pin well away from the edges. But I'm just gonna put some pins in 
to hold everything down. And then it will just be all ready for me to finish sewing. Oh, there's another little one that's gone a bit bent. I want that bigger pin down the bottom there. I'm going to put the pin there, so that should be enough pins to hold that. Now I'm going to flip this over because I'm actually going to put it through the overlocker this way because I can see where my cushion is from that side. And I'm going to just put a couple more pins in again and I'm just going to put them where I've got the um, envelope back. Because what I just have to be careful of, and I will remove these as I send them around the overlocker, I just want a guide to know where those are so that they don't flip on me as I'm sewing it. So I'm just gonna put a couple of pins there and one pin there. So that will be my mental reminder to just go careful and just check that those seams are all nice and flat when we come to put that together. So there it is, all ready for me to sew. Now I'm actually gonna do that in a separate video. I'm gonna set up my overlocker and we're gonna roll the cameras on it so we can sort of film that as a, a bit of a bonus content if anybody that's interested in watching that. Um, as I said, I made this from my scraps, but if you don't have any scraps, the Moda scrap bags are really good for this. And, and that's where I started in my journey with scraps, getting sort of the scrap bags. Um, but you tend to find, this only uses one and a half inch strips, and you tend to find you have one and a half inch strips in here, at least. I, I so far, have not had a bag that's had anything in it that's been narrower than one and a half uh, inches. Now, I can't provide any guarantees because there will be a variety of widths in there, but there should certainly be enough in one, I would think, um, for you to make your little nine patches from one and a half. So the mode of scrap bags, if you don't have a lot of scraps, um, or if you want fabrics that coordinate really well, um, they work really well for that. Uh, and we do sell those here. So you can have a look um, on our website uh, for those. As I said, we're gonna leave that there. So I hope you enjoyed that little technique, seeing how I did that little cuff. Now I will just say the beauty of this, why I like them is because that cuff provides a little bit more weight um, to the uh, bottom of that. So it sort of sits quite nicely. So it doesn't tend to gape quite so much. And I think it just gives it a really nice finish. But the other advantage to it is you could very easily turn that into a button band. So if you wanted to do a button closure, I would use some interfacing on the inside of that, but you could make a couple of button holes and you could put some buttons on and that would double up as a button band. So it's a really nice, simple technique. Like I said, I borrowed it from sort of the pillowcase, how we make pillowcases, but it works really well on an envelope back cushion. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all those wonderful things. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you'll join us again here next time in the sewing studio.